before we get into the video, make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. I mean, come on, what are you doing? If you're not subbed to me by now, my content is fire from stop motions, news videos, reviews, music occasionally. All my social media accounts are linked down below. And now, let's get straight to it. Okay, so we've got quite a bit of news to talk about. Today is the big day, Rise of the Beast embargo lifted, we've got some voice actor confirmations, legacy toy leaks, so let's get right down to the nitty gritty, shall we? So first up here, Legacy Deluxe Class Bombshell was leaked, revealed, whatever you want to call it, by Maddie is Gone on Instagram. The bombshell here looks great, uh... He was rumored to be a remold of, what was it, Shrapnel, the figure that just came out. I haven't gotten, believe it or not, I haven't gotten any of the Insecticons yet. Not even the one in the Buzzworthy 4-pack, so I gotta catch up on my Insecticons. Weirdly enough, I actually really love the Insecticons, so I don't know why I haven't gotten any of these yet. But yeah, I definitely gotta catch up on him here soon. Uh, Bombshell, I'm really liking the way he looks, even though he is a Shrapnel remold, I think. The reused parts are the thighs, the chest region, and the lower or upper arms, I think. But yeah, I'm loving the way the head looks. He has that unique section on top of the head that we all know and love Bombshell for, so I really love that a lot. And yeah, the paint is decent, you know. It's a pretty simple Insecticon design, so there's not much new or different or innovating here, but... It's a very nice Deluxe Class Bombshell, and I definitely want to get it at some point. By the way, Legacy Armada Prime on deck, people, if you haven't seen the Stop Motion review I dropped on him like a week and a half ago, go check it out, link in bio. Duh, 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 duh. Last night, there was some premieres for Rise of the Beast going on, a lot of them actually, and David Selblove, he was at the one in, I think it was, New York City. Obviously, he's the voice actor for Rhinox and Battle Trap. And he also confirmed on his Instagram last night that, and I quote, I just saw our, our epic premiere in Brooklyn tonight. I'm excited to reveal that I am the voice of Ape Link. So we now have the confirmation on who is voicing Ape Link, the fifth Maximal, who is rumored to be the original leader of the Maximals before um, Optimus Primal. So we'll see how that turns out in the movie. I'm not sure on that. But yeah, I'm excited to hear how David Subloff differs between a Battle Trap, Rhinox, and Ape Link. Even though there are reports from people that have seen the movie that Rhinox's lines have been cut in the movie. So, I don't know how that's going to bode well with the fandom. I don't know how I'm going to like that. How that's handled in the movie. Maybe it's like the strong and silent type. I don't know. But that, that would be stripping a lot of Rhinox's main characteristics that made him Rhinox and made him so unique in the original Beast Wars cartoon. That I don't know how I'll feel about that, but we'll see. This Friday, three days away, I'm seeing it. This Friday, 3.30 p.m., y'all know the vibes, I can't wait. And now, shifting gears into some legacy year three news we have here from Praxis. He is a leaker on the boards. He says here... Armada Universe 1.0 Ramjet is happening as well for next year. I've been told it selects, but to be honest, I doubt it'll be selects. But it's going to be an exclusive of some kind. Same with Leader Cryotech. Both are not mainline, but are some type of exclusives. And going back to my last post about the figure descriptions, to reiterate, Strongarm doesn't seem to be a pre-tool for anyone. Not that I can see. She is pretty close to the RID 2015, just, just you know, chugified, so she'll fit very well with the G1 Fembots. I think she comes with a crossbow. One last thing. It seems the three leaders for Uni Mainline, which is year three of Legacy, uh, are after putting everything together. Tigerhawk, Sandstorm, Armada Galvatron, Razorclaw Universe 1.0. So that's four new leaders. I could suspect maybe two evil package refreshes, like how this year was with two package, package refresh leaders, but only time will tell. That's it for now. So... A little bit to unpack here, ladies and gentlemen. I am so hyped for a new Universe 1.0 Ramjet. Y'all know me. I love my early 2000s Transformers, the characters, Unicron Trilogy, Animated, Bayverse. Y'all know the vibes. So, I am really hyped for this. And if y'all remember in those club comic books, Vector Prime and Ramjet faced off a lot. 
So that's probably coinciding with the new Vector Prime that's coming out next year that's going to be a Voyager class. So you're going to be able to have those two face off just like in the comic books next year. And I'm so excited. Probably going to do a stop motion short with that or some toy photography like always. always. Cryotech. I have been wanting this repaint ever since we knew of a Dragon Megatron coming in what? That was like August 2021 when that was first leaked. So yes, please give me Cryotech in that blue color scheme. Uh, oh man, us two early 2000s Transformers fans are eating good. 2000s fans in general who grew up in that time frame, we are eating good. This is our time these past couple years or year and a half. So, yeah, and it's good to hear that Strong Arm isn't a pre-tool for anyone because it seems like that's been the norm for a lot of female molds and female figures in Legacy lately. So I'm glad she seems to be a standalone type thing or might be reused for a character that we just don't know about yet. So, uh, yeah, I'm really curious to see how Strong Arm turns out. I'm not really attached to her as a character, but I, I, I could use some more female Autobot sisters. <laughs> And people have been pointing out with this leader class lineup for for next year and this year, it seems like the new thing here is only two new leader molds in the Generations mainline because we've gotten that this year, I believe, and we're getting that next year. So, and the only two new molds next year are Tiger Hawk and Sandstorm. Armada Galvatron, obviously repaint, and Razor Claw which is obviously going to be a repaint of Tigerhawk. By the way, Razorclaw, I'm so excited for that too. I can't wait to have him face off with my R.A.D. 2001 uh, Optimus and Magnus. I actually, got, I actually got Magnus right here. I was just playing with him before I uh, went to go record this video. He's from those club comic books from the early 2000s, so I'm excited to put him with my Universe 1.0 Nemesis Prime, which is a big convoy repaint, so really excited for Razor Claw, Ramjet. I'm excited for all these, honestly. I'm really curious to see how Sandstorm turns out, even though I'm more of a um, IDW Sandstorm fan. I really love that Voyager class from 2013, but we'll see how this turns out right here. The last little tidbit that Praxis gave away here... He says, Blue Star Scream and Red Hot Shot should be leaked soon and maybe a Comic-Con release. So we are going to be getting not only the Power Links repaint for Megatron, but possibly Star Scream and Hot Shot 2 this year in the next couple months. Oh, man. Us, us Unicron Trilogy fans are eating good. We're getting the Unicron Trilogy in live action. All these figures coming out in the Generations line the past year. Man. I'm going to have to double dip, triple dip, because I plan on getting doubles of Armada, Starscream, and Hotshot from Legacy anyway. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to be getting those Power Links repaints. All right, the big finale of this video right here. Rise of the Beast embargo has been lifted. Reviews are getting flooded everywhere on all these major platforms by critics. And we are getting in some scores. These are going to fluctuate in the next day, two days, couple days, or whatever. Definitely today, these are going, going to be fluctuating quite a bit uh, as rev as more reviews come in from people. So first up here, IMDB, it is at 6.8 out of 10. Um, but when I go to the Google main page, it says 7.8 out of 10. So I don't know which one is the most up-to-date version. But when I go to their website, it says 6.8 right now. So that is not bad, you know. It means that it's a pretty decent movie, but nothing amazing to warrant an above 8 or an 8, eight or above. Um, so that's not bad. I was hoping it would cross into the 8 realm, you know, 8 or 9. Um, but we'll see how it goes up or hopefully not. I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't go down any further than a 6.8. Hopefully it stays in that uh, late 70s region on IMDb or late 7 region, I should say. Uh, now on to Rotten Tomatoes right here. We are looking at, it says here when, I, when I'm when i on the Google page for Rise of the Beast, it says 73%. But when I go to Rotten Tomatoes page, it says 70%. Um, with 30 reviews in at the time of this recording, there is no audience score yet. So there's zero ratings for that. So we're just looking at, at a 70 or a 73% right now on Rotten Tomatoes. That is not bad either. Obviously, fresh, 7 out of 10. 
or uh, 70 out of 100 seems to be the norm rate here for Rise of the Beast. And that's not bad at all. That is a pretty good rating, uh, especially for uh, um, a major Transformers movie like Rise of the Beast here. Because we know the track record with those past Bay movies. 18%, 20%, 30%. That is awful. Uh, the highest was the 2007 movie, and that was at like 58%. So this is definitely way better than all the other ratings, except for Bumblebee. That's at, what, a 94% or something crazy like that. Me personally, I don't think the movie was that amazing. I thought it was just an average 80s movie, but it was still a breath of fresh air for the movies. And coming off the last night, it definitely was amazing after witnessing the train wreck of TLK. But back to Rise of the Beast here. 70% so far. We'll see how that fluctuates on the tomato meter as more reviews come in because still, we're only at 30 reviews that have been submitted right now at the time of this recording. So it could go up. I'm hoping it goes up to the 80% realm or late 70s realm because Godzilla vs. Kong is at like 75 on Rotten Tomatoes. So I mean... And it's, it sounds like this movie is a little bit better than Godzilla vs. King Kong. So we'll see... We'll see how that goes. And IGN gave it a 7 out of 10, which is very good because they recently gave Indiana Jones a 4 out of 10. So, yeah, a 7 out of 10, definitely a good score. Nothing nothing bad at all. If it was under a 6, then we would be worrying a little bit here. But uh, it seems like 7s, 70% all across the board here. I think Metacritic, I don't know... Metacritic isn't listed on here when I go to the Google main page. I think that's at like 50% right now, but Metacritic is a lot more looser in terms of uh, who can submit stuff, so I wouldn't, wouldn't really go by that too much because there's like random people commenting, I'm just rating this a 1 out of 4 because I hate Rise of the Beast. I haven't even seen the movie yet. Like, what? But um, yeah, it seems like we're going to be averaging in the 70s here, 7 out of 10, you know, so, which is good. I hope it crosses over into the 8 or 80s realm because that would be very good. That would obviously boost the word of mouth and more people to go see it because I want to see this Unicron trilogy finished that Stephen Cabell Jr. has planned. But, um, yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. Let me know down in the comments below what y'all think about the uh, scores for Rise of the Beast so far. Hopefully it continues to go up. What do you guys think about the new bombshell that was leaked? The info for, for Legacy 2024. How do you guys feel about David Sobolev voicing Ape Link? And yeah, thank you all for watching this video. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye!